Hello and welcome back to P Academy. So this is the third example in a lecture series on the on Z parameters. Exactly. So we are still looking at support network. So before we look at this example, I want to say something with respect to the example two we did. I didn't mention it exactly. So uh, if you are coming from that example, you might understand. But if you missed that, kindly check the uh, playlist on support network. You are going to find that video there because you see it as example two. So in that example too, we got this answer. Exactly. So there's something that you notice that you see that Z21 and Z12, the answers are the same thing. You can see we are getting both uh, four ohms. So that means our Z12 is equal to our Z21. So and if you remember at the beginning of the video, I said if you have Z12 equals to Z21, that means it's a reciprocal network. Reciprocal network. Exactly. So the reason I'm saying this is you might come across a question that will tell you that, okay, maybe determine if the circuit is a reciprocal network. Exactly. So those are the things I think I'm, uh, let me, I'm trying to scroll back to that part where I mentioned it. So you can see it here, that if Z12 is equal to Z21, it is a reciprocal. And if Z11 and Z22 is a symmetrical network. So the reason why I, I had to go back to mention is that you see this point that I mentioned here, is, you, know, you need to take note of it. Exactly. They are not just there for... Um, Let's just say for fashion, there's a reason that it's there. So the question I ask you that you determine if a um, network is reciprocal or is symmetrical. So those are the, uh, that's one thing you need to take note of. Exactly. All right. So now let's come back to this example three. It says, if the Z parameter for the two-port network as shown below are Z11 is equal to 40 ohms, Z22 is equal to 50 ohms, Z12 is equal to also equals to Z21. So you can see. So that means... The circuit is what? I hope you can you got that now. If Z12 is equal to Z21, the circuit is what? Reciprocal. Exactly. I hope you've gotten it. If Z12 is equal to Z21, the circuit or the, I mean the network is a reciprocal network. If Z11 is equal to Z21, the network is symmetrical. Please take note of this. So it said then what are the values of R1, R2, and R3? Now basically this question is more looking like an objective kind of question because it has options. Exactly. So these are the options. So if you know, watch the first two videos, I believe this is something that you should be able to attempt. Now, another thing that I want to draw attention to is the question is that you can see after the access to find the value of R1, R2 and R3, you can see the circuit that they gave to us. It's a very, you know, very simple, should I call it simple circuit? You know, there's not too much details. You really have this R1, R2 and R3 and that's actually what we are looking for. So what am I trying to say in essence? Once the question have tell you that it is a Z parameter, you are, by now you should already have an idea of what a Z parameter circuit look like in terms of the input side and the output side. Because some questions just like this one will not even give you too many information. You can see they didn't indicate V1, they didn't indicate V2, they didn't indicate the direction of I1 and also the direction of I2. But since they mentioned Z parameter, just know those informations are constant. Exactly. So let's go ahead and solve the question. So in doing this now, I'm just going to draw the circuit, just the same step, exactly. And as well, you can just pause the video if you have got part one and the, the example one and the example two. I want to believe you, um, you have an edge through with this also. So, and then, okay, then so I'll introduce my V two and then for V one, exactly. Then since it's a Z parameter, like I said, the direction of I one will be like this. Then for I2, okay, so this is my R1, R2, and then R3. So this will be my V1, this will be my V2. So you can see that information is not given. Our V2 was, was not given, our V1, they didn't show it. The direction for I1, they didn't show it. The direction for I2, they didn't show it. But however, since they've mentioned Z parameter, just know that that, uh, that is the direction for I1, for I2. So just go ahead and include it yourself, exactly. So. So I haven't done this now, so let's go ahead and give uh, the polarities. So the V1 to be plus minus, plus minus. So for the first match, which is the input side, so we are going to take the direction of current I1. So it's moving in clockwise direction. So that's I1. For So let me just write there. This is our mesh one. This is the input, input side. So then for the mesh 2, is moving as a clockwise, so it's going to be like this. 
so this is i2 so let me write it here mesh2 or you can indicate it as your output side so output okay so now let's give polarities to the resistors in it because that, and that's what we're actually looking for so this will be plus minus plus minus plus minus plus minus okay are we good all right now so let's go ahead and apply KVL to mesh one. Okay, so in doing that, let's that means we are going in this direction. Don't forget. So I'll be starting from my V1. So from negative to positive. So that'll be V1. And then from positive to negative for R R1. So that will be minus R1. I1 exactly because we don't know what R1 is. So now let's come over to R3. So from positive to negative, so we are going to be having minus R3 I1, and then from positive to negative due to current I2. So that would be minus R3 I2. So that is the all the elements uh, or the components we can find in mesh one. So that's equals to zero. So now let's simplify this. We are having V1. So if you look at what we are having here, you can see that our uh, I1 is common. So we can factor it out. So in doing that, we're going to be having minus I1 into brackets R1 plus R3. So if you try to expand this, you're going to be getting this. Exactly. Okay. Then minus R3 I2 equals to zero. Okay, so now let's move every other thing to the other side of the equals to sign. Let's move all of this to the other side of the equals to sign. So that means we are going to be having our V1 will be equals to, so let me write it as R1 plus R3 I1, exactly, I, okay, this will be in brackets, plus R3 I2. So this will be our equation 1. So take note of that. So that will be our equation one. So now let's go ahead and do the same thing to. So let's go ahead and apply KVL. So let's go ahead and apply KVL to mesh two, which is our output side. So let's start with the V two. So from negative to positive. So that will be V two. Then if we should come here to our R2 now from positive to negative. So that will be minus R2 I2. So from positive to negative, we are on R3 now. And that is due to current I2. So that will be minus R3 I2 from positive to negative due to current I1. So that will be minus r3 i1 then that's all for the output side equals to zero okay so that means our v2 is also if you look here you see that i2 is common so we can factor that out that will be minus i2 into brackets r2 plus r3 again if you expand this you're going to get this so don't let that confuse you so then minus r3 i1 equals to zero so if I should move all of this to the other side of the equals to sign so that V2 can stand alone, we'll be having our V2 equals to. So if this goes to the other side of the equals to sign, that will be R3 I1. So I want to see to come first because of the I1. Then if this all if this should also go, that will be plus R2 plus R3 in brackets, then I2. Okay, so now we already have the second equation, which is, this will be our equation 2. Okay. So if you have been following the first example, the second example, I want to believe by now you should understand how to pick the comparison with the general formula. So now we can say that our Z11 is what, with this, is R1 plus R3. 
then our z12 not our, our z12 will be equals to r3 which is this okay so now let's move over to equation 2 so that means our z21 will be r3 is equals to r3 and then our z22 will be equals to r2 plus r3 this one so equals to r2 plus r3 okay now let's go back to the question now the question said something the question said now if the z parameter for the two port network are given below that our z11 is 40 z22 is 50 and our z12 is equals to z20 equals to 30 so let me write it here that from the question we are told that our z11 is equals to 40 ohms then our z22 is what 50 50 ohms and then our z12 is equals to z21 and is equals to 30 ohms so with this information now with this information and what we have here we can use it to get the value of our r1 r2 and r3 so what we just need is just substitution exactly so now let's look at it together we said our z12 is equal to z21 is equal to 30. now let's come back here our z12 this is it and they said is equal to z21 is equal to 30 ohms so that means we can conclude that our z or rather let me see that means our r3 so let's just write it like this then we said our z12 is equals to z21 is equals to 30 ohms and if you look at it our z12 is also the same thing as our z21 which is equals to r3 is equals to r3 okay so that means we can conclude from here that therefore our r3 is what is 30 ohms we've gotten r3 so now we need r r1 and r2 okay also the question says our z11 is 40 and if you look at here our z11 after calculation we got our z1 to be the sum of r1 plus r3 so let's write it so if we got our z11 to be r1 plus r3 okay now we already know what our r3 is so if you make r1 subject from that means our r1 will be equals to z11 minus r3 okay so that means it's going to be 40 minus 30 and that will just give us 10 ohms okay so with that that means our r1 is equals to 10 ohms very good so you can see that it's, it's pretty much straightforward so let's go ahead and look for r2 now okay so for us to get our r2 so let's go back to the uh, you can see this is the part that is having r2 z22 and we are told from here that our z22 is 50 ohms okay so let's refer for right equation that means our z22 from what we got to be equals to r2 plus r3 r2 plus r3 okay and that is what uh, we got from our calculation and the question now is telling us that z22 that the value for z22 is 50 is equals to 50 so so if you make from here now if you make our r2 the subject formula so that means our r2 is equals to z22 minus r3 okay so our z22 this is it 50 ohms so that will be 50 minus and our r3 we've got our r3 to be 30 minus 30 so that's equals to 20 ohms so that means our r2 so therefore our r2 is equals to 20 ohms okay so now let's put everything together so that means our r1 is what 10 is 10 ohms our r2 is 20 ohms 
and our R3 is 30 ohms. And that's the answer. So now let's go back and go and check the option because if you look at it, it's a question that came with option. So you can see definitely that means the answer is A. So I hope you can see the different ways in which um, question under Z parameters can appear. So the basic thing is just understand the, um, the Z parameter equation, understand mesh analysis. Now if you look at also all this example I've been using, I've been using mesh analysis to, to solve it, that's KVL. You can also use the idea of KCL to solve it where you pick this node as your node and then you pick this second node as your reference node. You can also use superposition theorem. You can also use um, what is that z voltage divider rule. You know, you can just use any of those uh, method exactly. But I am more comfortable using mesh analysis exactly. But that should not limit you to also using it. You can go ahead and use superposition. You can go ahead and use um, nodal analysis or mesh analysis exactly. So since we have already simplified them into you know circuit like this. So, but just make sure that your equations will look in this form, just like we are having in those two equations. So, here is the solution to the example 3. I hope you got the concept right. If you do, please let me know. Give the video a thumbs up if you find value in it. And if you have any questions, do let me know in the comment section below. So, with these three examples, I believe you are good to go with Z parameters. Because in the next part of this video, now we are going to be moving to Y parameters. So, thank you very much. And then I will see you all in the next one.